this morning, before you had your first cup of coffee, check your email, raise your hand. That's also about 97%. Bonus question, here's the trick one. How many of you in the last two weeks, at least once, have woken up in the middle of the night to check your email? That is screwed up. <laughs> but seriously, there's a reason this is going on, and by the way, we're going to talk about the word duration, whether or not it's a buzzword or a phenomenon in the next few minutes. Eric Schmidt from Google has said that from the beginning of time until 2003, we created five exabytes of data. They have to think about what that means. That's the Bible, that's War and Peace, that's the phone book, that's your love letters, that's everything. We're now creating five exabytes of data every two days. That's why you're waking up in the middle of the night checking your email. Because the thing that used to be this lovely pond of information where you could go to the fishing pole and pull out the data you wanted is now this roaring river, this fire hose thing that simply comes at us so fast <coughs> that we can't manage it anymore. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is there's actually a solution and the thing about the 140 conference, and the reason why it's so excited for me to be here, is you're the solution. And I'll give you kind of an example. Think about the things that you use. You tweet. Are you a Twitterer? Does anyone describe yourself as a Twitterer? Are you a Facebooker? Are you a Flickerer? Are you a magnifier? Are you a scorifier? Are you any of the tools that you use? to organize information. And nobody, nobody describes themselves, you used to maybe describe yourself as a blogger, but not so much anymore, right? So now you use all these things, these different tools for different purposes, but you don't really have a word for the thing that you do. And so my proposal in the next few minutes is that I'm going to convince you to leave here today describing yourself as a curator. And, and the truth of the matter is in this room, 95% of you already are. Um, let me give you an example of kind of how that works. The real time web breaks all the algorithms of search. It used to be that, uh, that the way that search worked was you built a page, people would go online, they would visit your page, they would link to it, Google would notice you that all this invalid links and say, oh, this is a page that the community is validated. Now, some number of you are going to tweet, this guy knows that was really interesting at magnify at the 140 conference hashtag. <laughs> Maybe. And some other of you are going to go, boy, that was a really shameless plot. Uh, but along the way, that's going to go out on the web, it's going to make its way into the world, and it's going to be gone before any of the algorithms can sniff it out and figure out whether or not it's useful. So what starts to happen is, instead of algorithms answering the question, what really starts to answer the question is your relationships, the people that follow you. And I, I want to just take a second and read from you, from, oddly enough, page 212 of uh, the Curation Nation book. See if this doesn't sound familiar. If you can imagine somebody who's nine years old today, spending three and a half years studying Morse code and the rules and regulations of amateur radio operators, that's dedication. That's Jeff Holder, my friend's people. I grew up with a license to communicate and the ability, and I started to connect people randomly around the world, but there was always an underlying theme of connecting people with people and to be able to have just a conversation, says Paul. For Paul, where the power of humans to connect to other humans began in his earliest days as a ham radio operator. In, a, in amateur radio lingo, it's about being a repeater. A repeater is a piece of equipment that takes someone's voice and retransmits it so that it's able to be heard by other people outside of a person's <laughs> local listening area. In many ways, a retweet is a human repeater. So I don't know if any of us at nine years old was figuring out where the web was going, but Jeff certainly was. And the more I think about the analogy between early ham radio and what's happening now, what's clear to me is, you know, you don't repeat everything. You repeat certain things. So I wanted to just give you three very specific kind of curation tips. Things that I think work for me and that I hope some of you will think about. The first thing is, think about your digital clothing. And what I mean by that is, we all woke up this morning, we looked in the mirror, we said, do I want to wear this jacket or that jacket? Do I want to wear this skirt or this pair of pants? And we got dressed, and the clothing that we wear says something about who we are and what we want to say to the world. Retweeting is very much that same thing. Linking on your Facebook page, following people or 
clicking the like button. All those behaviors are you gathering your digital clothing. And they're very, very important. And you know, I don't know about you, but I'm ruthless about who I follow and unfollow. I mean, my life is very busy and I have a lot of data coming at me. And when people do a good job curating information for me, I follow them religiously. And when they don't, when they don't I cut them off. And I don't feel bad about it. There's no guilt. Unfriending is a little different. There's guilt. Um, uh, but, but, but what we need to know is that all these filters that we're using today are very crude first generation filters. And there's no doubt that there are going to be better ones and different ones and that Facebook is going to have, you know, the word friend gets used very broadly at the moment. I mean, the people you work with are your friends, your family is your friends, your coworkers are your friends, the guy that you meet at the conference are your friends. Really, we'd like to see some different layers there. And I think the folks at Facebook know that. So thing number one, think about your digital clothing. Thing number two is think about the fact that in many, many ways, listening is more powerful than speaking. Now, what do I mean by that? On Hootsuite, I probably scan five or 600 tweets a day. And I retweet seven of them or six of them. So as a ratio, one of the things I'm really careful about is that I want to be really clear about the fact that my followers aren't going to be exposed to the four or 500 things that I'm going to look at. And I'm going to make careful judgments. And I used to retweet things based on cool headlines. I've stopped doing that. And I now kind of really make myself click through, read the article, make sure that it's interesting, make sure that it isn't just link, the tweet, the Twitter equivalent of link bait. Uh, but I think that makes following me more valuable than my followers. I think that makes me a better curator. And I take it seriously. It's really part of my responsibility. Um, excuse me. And thing number three, in a noisy world, which is the world that we're going to live in forever, people really value and hunger for not more information, but less. They don't hunger for more sources and more videos and more tweets. They hunger for clarity. So think about your role as a curator and ask yourself, if someone's following you because you're the expert in great cupcake bakeries on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, do you really want to include in that stream information about your kids, you know, school issues? Or do you want to start to create categories in which you curate information and become an expert, a person, somebody people follow for information? And I think that you're going to see many of us develop kind of curatorial personalities. So in closing, I want to say this thing is very, very important. You know, it's easy to follow the tech blogs and get caught up in it. Who's going to win? Will it be Apple or Facebook? Will it be Google or Amazon? And it's, it's really easy to start to think about the web in terms of these big companies and which one's going to win. And so I would leave you this one thought. The web isn't about Apple. It isn't about Google. It isn't about Amazon. It's about us. Thank you very much. Yeah.